Now I'm going to use this urn, it's one of my favourites, to arrange my flowers. And I've got a ball of chicken wire that I've just scrunched up. So I'm going to push that into the vase. Now you don't have to use chicken wire. However, if you are making an arrangement for a wedding or an event and you need to move it, that is kind of vital because it will hold the stems in position and it stops the flowers from leaning from one side to another, especially if you're gonna use something heavy like the peonies that I'm going to use as my queen flowers. I'm gonna push the chicken wire in nicely so that you won't be able to see it once the flowers are in and then I'm gonna fill it up with crystal clear water. I have given both the chicken wire and the vase a quick clean before I started. We're gonna put quite a lot of flowers in this vase so I'm gonna make the water quite deep. with I put you on a bucket so you're nice and high and you can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna add my foliage which this time is Pitta Sporum. You don't need to be too precious just slide them in at an angle the stems will rest where they're happy like that <laughs> you can just compensate with the rest of the stems as you go there we go, last stem going in now, and there's six stems of Pittosporum, if you're interested. Next, I'm adding the Euphorbia, which is nicely calloused over, and I'm making sure that their stems are all at slightly different heights. So it looks really natural. Next, I'm gonna add some Philadelphus. Now, this is a different variety from one I've used before. It's a plant I've had for a couple of years. And now is a really good time to buy Philadelphus from the garden center because it's flowering and you can see exactly what it's gonna look like. Next, I've got some Sweet Rocket and where we've got some shorter stems where they would have been lost in the arrangement, I've taken them off and I'm gonna put them along the lip of the vase here. There we go. And you don't need a lot just a little bit because we've got lots of white flowers still to go in. It's quite effective, isn't it? But you don't want to see where the flowers finish and the vase starts particularly. Cute. You can see here on the stems where the searing has done its magic and worked to keep the flowers hydrated. Next, I think it's got to be some twinkly stems of Breeza Maxima. Now I'm creating a little cluster of Breeza Maxima. The stems are all different lengths, so I'm placing them, the shorter at the front and the taller towards the back, just feeding it through the chicken wire so it stays put. And I think that looks better, it looks much more natural than if you just dotted the stems all around, you probably wouldn't see them as much as you do if you arrange them in little groups. So next, I think we need something a bit more round and that can be the Orlea grandiflora. It will perfectly complement the euphorbia that we've already added. Trimming the flowers down to size so they fit snugly in any little gaps that I've got. There, Orlea is in. And you could quite happily stop there, couldn't you? But we're not going to, we're gonna see what else is in our bucket. I've got here some Agrostemma, I've got some perennial Campanula, and I've also got some sweet peas. So I think that that will add an extra pizzazz to our arrangement. It's looking quite meadowy, so this is gonna make it look a little bit more luxury. So those are our agrostemma going in. Now, because the arrangement's getting quite full, what you might want to do is just decide in advance where the flower's gonna sit, maybe there. Just tip it to one side and then you can see how much you need to trim off of the stem. So it fits just in the place you want it to go. I've got the sweet peas to go in, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the peonies first. Because they're so large, you don't want to cover up and swamp out everything. So we'll place the peonies and then we'll come back and decorate around them. Aren't they stunning? These are Festiva Maxima. Oh, my arrangement's turning. Now I just want to step back and show you the difference that one queen bloom will make. 
So you've only got one peony, one rose, one ranunculus spare in your garden, then that is enough to uplift and transform your display. And you can now see the, the full effect and purpose of your filler flowers and foliage. Look how far a bush of peonies will go if you've got the supporting artists behind it. The chicken wire is really doing its job now. I've nestled it in amongst the foliage, but these flowers are really heavy. So if you didn't have anything in it, it would just slide down the arrangement, taking the rest of the foliage with it. But with the chicken wire and the flowers behind it supported so well as well, the peony is staying just where I put it. So we've only got two flowers in there at the moment. There we go, take a step back. So now I've got the rest of my sweet peas, Campanula, and I've got a couple of anemones just to finish off the arrangement. These anemones are absolute whoppers. Look at that. There we go, and I've just remembered that I picked just a few Nigella. I think they'll look great just there. And now finally, I'm gonna add our very tall sweet peas. Now, when making arrangements like this, you can go on forever. So my advice is when you think you're done, bring the arrangement in somewhere cool and fairly dark out of direct sunlight and let it relax. And then when you come back, in a couple of hours time after having a break you'll be able to see if there's any gaps that need filling or if you're completely happy with it.